Hi everyone, welcome to Universal Stories. The title of our story today is Red Heart. This story consists of 12 chapters, we will release two chapters in a single video. Stay on this channel to hear the mystery behind Red Heart. Red Heart Chapter 1 The movers worked quickly to get all of the Suzuki's belongings into their new home. Things were moving swiftly thanks to the help of the first-time homeowners. Mr. and Mrs. Suzuki carried as much as they could. And even their daughter Minami helped pull her weight by bringing in as many of her stuffed animals as her arms could hold. The young family had saved for years and made numerous sacrifices to get to this day, but their dream had finally come true. They now had a home they could truly call their own. Gone were the days of living in drafty apartments or having to deal with noisy neighbors and landlords that turned a deaf ear to their pleas. When all of their things were safely inside, the Suzuki family began moving boxes into their appropriate rooms. This task became difficult as Minami was opening every box she came across all in the name of finding the playthings that belonged to her and her alone. Sneaking up behind her daughter, Mrs. Suzuki tickled her ribs and sent Minami into a wild fit of laughter. What are you doing, Minami? She asked. I'm looking for my crayons, replied Minami, who never bothered to turn around to face her mother. Instead, she continued searching wildly for her instruments afar. Where did you put them? I want to draw a picture of our new house. They're in one of the boxes in your room, replied Mrs. Suzuki. Learning of the whereabouts of her things, Minami sprinted off to her room. Mrs. Suzuki made her way to the kitchen to take a well-deserved break with her husband. Minami's already so comfortable with our new house, she said, taking a seat at the table. It looks like the move wasn't as hard on her as we thought it was going to be. Kids are hard to read, said Mr. Suzuki. One day they're happy, the next you can't get them to say a word. I just hope she doesn't wake up tomorrow angry with us for moving her away from all of her friends. What choice did we have? We were outgrowing our old place. It was time for us to move. Besides, do you want to go back to that apartment? It smelled like dirty socks in the summer, and it was colder, inside than outside in the winter. With so much going on, Mrs. Suzuki had lost track of the time. Lunchtime had passed hours ago, and she was sure her dear Minami was in need of food. So she quickly made a sandwich and took it to her daughter's room. Reaching the top of the stairs, Mrs. Suzuki could hear clearly that Minami was carrying on a conversation inside her room. Treading ever so carefully to the door, Mrs. Suzuki listened intently to what her daughter was saying. We used to live near a big park and there was a tree that I used to climb every day with my friends, said Minami. At first I was afraid to climb it, but when I got older I got brave, and I could make it all the way to the top. I bet you could make it to the top too if you tried. I'll take you there someday. That way you can meet all my other friends. Minami, said her mother, opening the door. When she entered, Mrs. Suzuki found her daughter sitting on the floor playing with a doll. Another doll was lying on the floor, a few feet away, looking as if it had been put there for someone else to play with. I thought you might be hungry, so I brought you something to eat. Thank you, mommy, said Minami, accepting the sandwich. Minami, said Mrs. Suzuki, staring at the other doll, lying on the floor. What? Asked Minami, mouth full of food. It's nothing, said Mrs. Suzuki, a smile upon her face. That night over a late dinner, Minami's parents had a discussion about the behavior their daughter was beginning to display. I told you something like this was going to happen, said Mrs. Suzuki, rubbing her now throbbing forehead. I knew she would show signs of being depressed, but I never thought she would start talking to herself. What's wrong with that? Asked Mr. Suzuki. When I was her age I had an imaginary friend. And look at me, I turned out fine. I've tried so hard to make sure our daughter doesn't grow up to be like you, and now I see that my efforts were wasted. Why did we learn how to raise a child from a book? That's not how God intended children to be raised. Hey, that book came highly recommended, replied Mr. Suzuki. 
Besides, Minami's going to be fine. You worry too much about her. But you didn't hear what I heard. She was talking about where we used to live. That shows that she doesn't like it here. She's repressing everything. When did you become such an expert in psychology? The way she was talking, said Mrs. Suzuki. She really thought there was someone else in that room with her. Just give her a few more days, insisted Mr. Suzuki. If she starts showing more signs that something's wrong, then we'll do something about it. Unbeknownst to the two, Minami had sneaked downstairs and was listening to every word that her parents were saying about her. Red Harp Chapter 2 when Mrs. Suzuki walked into the living room she found Minami on the floor drawing at a fever pace in her sketchbook. So consumed with her artwork was Minami that she failed to notice her mother had entered the room. What are you drawing? Asked Mrs. Suzuki. This, said Minami, handing the sketchbook to her mother. Oh, how cute, said Mrs. Suzuki, smiling proudly as she appreciated the crudely drawn picture of a little girl. Is this you? It's not me, replied Minami, taking back her sketchbook. She then began adding the finishing touches to her picture. This is Sayaka. Sayaka? Asked Mrs. Suzuki. Sayaka's my new friend, replied Minami. I haven't seen you playing with any other kids since we moved here. Does she live around here? I'd like to meet her. You can meet her anytime you want, said Minami. She lives in my room. When Mr. Suzuki got home from work, his wife sat him down at the kitchen table to have an even more frank discussion about their daughter than the previous night. She's getting worse, said a clearly frustrated Mrs. Suzuki as she stirred her coffee so vigorously that some of it spilled over the edge of her mug. She's drawing pictures of her imaginary friend. And she even gave her a name. Sayaka. Sayaka. Have you ever heard of such a thing? And she said she would introduce me to her. Calm down, said Mr. Suzuki. I will not calm down. First thing tomorrow I'm taking her to get professional help. And I don't care how much it costs. We're going to put a stop to this before it gets out of hand. Professional help? Asked Mr. Suzuki. Let's think about this. There you go again, explained Mrs. Suzuki. What's there to think about? You just want to ignore the problem, and hope it goes away on its own. If you don't do something about this, I will. So, what's it going to be? Mr. Suzuki rubbed his now throbbing head. I'll fix this. Though she was supposed to already be in bed, Minami was sitting on the floor of her bedroom, with another girl of the same age. Do you like penguins, Sayaka? Asked Minami as she played with a stuffed penguin doll. Sayaka nodded. But I like cats more, she said. With a stuffed cat doll nearby, Minami picked it up. Cats? She asked before rubbing it in Sayaka's face, prompting both girls to begin laughing. As the girls continued playing with stuffed animals, a floorboard outside Minami's room creaked. The sound was so slight that Minami had failed to hear it, but Sayaka had, and it prompted her to flash an angry glare at the door. Slowly the door began to open. In entered Minami's father. Minami, you're already supposed to be in bed. You don't want mommy to get upset, do you? I was playing, replied Minami. Ah, with Sayaka? Asked Mr. Suzuki, though he could clearly see that the only other inhabitants of Minami's room was a group of stuffed animals. Minami nodded. If I let you stay up, will you pro eyes to be quiet? We'll be quiet, said Minami, who then placed her finger before her mouth to shush all others in her room. Good night, Minami, said Mr. Suzuki. Don't forget to say good night to Sayaka, too, said Minami. Mr. Suzuki chuckled. Of course, he said. Good night, Sayaka. After closing the door, Mr. Suzuki found his wife standing only inches away, giving him quite the scare. I heard what you said, whispered Mrs. Suzuki. You said goodnight to her imaginary friend. You're encouraging her behavior. Sorry, sorry, said Mr. Suzuki. I'll take care of it tomorrow. 
Though she would like to have stayed up all night to play with Sayaka, sleep eventually took a hold of Minami. Fortunately her bed was large enough to accommodate not only her but Sayaka, as well, though a ghost had no real need for rest. The floorboard outside Minami's room once again creaked. The sound wasn't loud enough to wake her, but it was more than loud enough to capture Sayaka's full attention. Like a cat, she stiffened up and glared at the door. Heavy breathing could be heard coming from out in the hall. After a few long scratches on the door, the knob slowly began to turn. Though it was unlocked, the door refused to open for whatever it was on the other side. As unexpectedly as it had begun, the strange occurrence came to an end. Stay tuned till our next video drops. Red Harp continues.